Here we are at the final chapter. I, I do call this the final chapter, but there's actually an extra part after this. It's basically a small epilogue that I split apart from this video due to size restraints, so uh, don't worry about that. Also, as much as I really don't enjoy admitting it, I may or may not make another video regarding the series if it's necessary. I'm really hoping not, though. Like, desperately hoping not. <laughs> Uh, like, guys, I see that this show is basically the only reason why I'm finally making progress into turning YouTube into my job, and I'm super duper grateful for every single subscriber that's backed me up in analyzing this disaster. I really am. But, guys, talking about this show is legit exhausting. It's legit making me sick now. <laughs> I originally wanted my YouTube channel to be a place where I can just discuss video games and recommend them to people, and also talk about gaming history that I thought was fascinating. But unfortunately, that just doesn't get the views, and I'm trying to turn this into my job right now. So I guess I'm feeding off of negativity like every other drama whore YouTuber now. Uh, anyway, in the fifth entry to this video series, we are going to ask one final question regarding this animated series. And it's a very important question, considering all the horrible stuff I've shown you guys up until this point. Who the hell is defending this garbage? Well, let's find out now. We are going to spend the final chapter of this video series searching for individuals who are defending this work via reviews on Crunchyroll, articles from various websites, and even an exclusive interview with Ray Rodriguez himself after this show finally hit Crunchyroll's airwaves. Let's start off with the Crunchyroll reviews. When I originally screen capped the average rating on its initial release, it was overwhelmingly negative. But as of the time of this recording, it's balanced out somewhat, with more 5 star ratings, clearly because of people wanting to defend this show. So without further ado, let's see what these defenders have to say. Also, if I misquote or misread any of these things, it's because I don't want to give any of these idiotic reviews the maximum effort. Okay, so I've been sifting around looking for reviews, but I, I ha you have to search really hard for them because it's just an ocean of one stars that are all justified, by the way. Okay, so I found a five-star review, but um, I'm pretty sure it's... I, I think it's sarcastic. I, I, okay, let me just narrate. Okay. <clears throat> I loved! It's amazing and super representative. Has captivating characters. It's funny and has a beautiful animation I loved. Oh, you, 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 you love the animation? Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> Salvia is very smart. I identify with her a lot. Who the fuck is Salvia? Rosemary is super fun and funny. I love it. Parsley and Thyme are captivating too. All characters are. It's super representative and talks about very important issues. <laughs> it talks about very important issues for humanity. Yeah, okay, bro. I need a new season. OMG, I love it. Okay, I don't think that per I don't think the person who made that review is like over 18. <laughs> I found one. I found one. I found one. Okay, okay, I found one. <laughs> okay. Uh, sh I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Ignore the one stars. This show has been review bombed by anti-LGBT groups. This show is pure, simple, colorful, diverse, and fun. A must watch if you're feeling down. If you find yourself thinking the characters are immature, it's because they are. The main cast is 14 year olds. Everyone matures by the end of the season and it's beautiful. Give the show a chance. Everyone matures by the end of the season. What happened? What about the toxic masculinity guys? What happened to them? I don't think they developed. I don't think they got any development there, but oh, okay, whatever you say, bro. What about? I'm pretty sure every male, like, young adult in the show got no form of character development in any way, shape, or form. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't, like, watch all the, ep I didn't watch the last episodes. I, I mostly just skimmed them through. But, uh, yeah, it, it was just more lesbian tension. Okay, so I found one. Here's one. While by all means not perfect, it was fun to watch. I felt the characters were well-developed and interesting. A lot of problems, such as animation errors or sound errors, become practically unnoticeable shortly after watching the show, and I found the art style to be very charming. Most of the hate is completely unjustified. This show was enjoyable, and the characters and writing made the show worth the watch. At least to me. 
Okay, first of all, no, the animation does not get unnoticeable over time. It's always bad, and it's extremely noticeable how bad it is. And secondly, and most importantly, why would you give this show a five-star review when you're openly admitting that there is basic fundamental issues and errors with, like, animation and sound quality? Like, what, what, kind, of, what kind of praise is that? Five stars! It's horrible, but you get used to how horrible it is. Like, like what the f***? What kind of review is that? What kind of defense is that? Like, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the, what type of person would just desperately go out of their way to defend how bad this show is. Like, <sighs> whatever, moving along, next one. Okay, here's another five-star review. If you're like me, and you hate people who gatekeep genres, dog whistle things that are too woke, quote unquote, for them, and generally peddle gross hateful rhetoric, you may have also just laughed reading all those one star reviews like I did. This show was an absolute delight from start to finish, and it has tons of queer representation, which is both fun and rewarding. H how the f is it reward? What the f? It feels like a kid's show, and is probably very different from a lot of more traditional animes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, like many other man-children, I mean, um, adults, love a lot of kid's shows. If you liked Ruby, but you wish the animation was better, and that they hadn't been so cagey about just showing representation, this is the show for you. So listen to the haters, and then think about how much you don't want to be them, and watch this show. That's straight up- this review is straight up propaganda. This guy literally ended his review saying, Hey, you don't want to be like these guys. Enjoy this show. You don't want- This guy straight up just said it- Well, he didn't directly say it, but he may as well just said, You don't want to be just like these guys, right? <laughs> You're not a transphobic, homophobic, terrible, disgusting human. So you- I gotta watch this show, and you gotta enjoy it. <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, this is a grown adult saying this, too. That's fucking amazing. Okay, so after reading all of these reviews, I did my best to go find website articles that support this show. But they're basically pretty much the same as all of these reviews on Crunchyroll. These articles completely ignore and pretend the poor quality and writing of this show basically don't exist. And only praise and micro-analyze the fact that they slapped a transgender character in it, along with a gay couple in the first episode. So honestly, I'd be wasting my time reading any of these. Oh, and by the way, the websites who produce these ass-kissing articles are... GamingMag.com, the home of queer geek culture. Anime fe <laughs> AnimeFeminist.com? I did my best to go find defenders of the show on YouTube as well. I, I really did, but I could not find a single one. I was really disappointed because I was pretty curious to see what a YouTube video would say defending the show. Uh, I guess I'll never get my wish. Anyway, I guess I should move on to the exclusive interview with Ray Rodriguez via two different website articles, thegamer.com and cbr.com. Let's read some quotes and discuss them. Once again, uh, I am going to skip around and uh, kind of nitpick through Ray Rodriguez's quotes just so I can talk about the relevant parts that I want to discuss. So yeah, if you see me skip around, that's the reason why. cbr.com's interviewer asks, You've been drawing these characters for a long time. How have they evolved since you first created them? Ray responds, The backstories of each of these girls have become a lot more fleshed out as the years went along. But the core of each girl is pretty similar to what it is when I first came up with High Guardian Spice back in 2013. I think the girls evolved the most when we started writing the show. Having more voices than just my own and putting the girls into new situations caused them all to grow a lot. Okay, so this entire idea was sitting in Ray's head since 2013, according to this interview quote. That's almost 10 years from now. And honestly, that would explain why the characters basically have no personality. Like, uh, listen, I can't deny that it's super exciting to get something out of your head and be put into an actual story after that idea has been in your head for years and years. I've gone through that scenario myself. I, I can't deny that it's really exciting and satisfying. But... Just because it's something you had in your head for a long time does not automatically mean it's going to 
be a good idea. In fact, that kind of just shows bad signs that the idea itself might be really dated or really hollow in its creation, since it's basically just some idea that you stored in your mind back when you were still a student in school. So either A, he never flushed out the characters at all or gave them an actual personality within that near decade, or B, he's just really bad at making characters. The next question for Ray is this. Representation is so important to me as a queer trans woman, the interviewer says. And since the production of High Guardian Spice, we've seen animation embrace LGBTQ themes and characters like never before. The Owl House, Steven Universe, and so many others have broken new ground, but we're still far from where we want to be. Do you feel animation on a global scale is stepping towards more inclusive representation this way? And why is it so important to you? Ray responds, I'm a queer Cuban trans guy, so we're in a similar boat. Having diverse representation is very important to me in the work I create. Animation is definitely getting more inclusive. I don't think I can speak for the entire world, but the change is very apparent in American cartoons. Steven Universe broke so many boundaries. I remember being shocked at how open they were to be able to Ruby and Sapphire's relationship 10 years ago, blah 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 blah. L look, that's not what I want to discuss. I want to talk about this part right here. A big part of why I created High Guardian Spice was because I wanted to make a show centering around four normal girls who aren't chosen ones or princesses who go on adventures and become heroes, all while being supportive friends to one another. I know it sounds simple, because it is, but when I was growing up, it felt like there were very few shows that fit that criteria in American cartoons. Because of that, I gravitated towards anime. I was obsessed with Magic Knight Magic Knight Ray Earth? I I've never heard of that. As a kid, and I think a large part of that was the fact that they were an all-female friend group that kicked ass and took care of each other. I love that the girls weren't just fighting with magic, although that too. They were using swords and bows and arrows to cut monsters in half. And at the end of the day, they weren't token girls with a male protagonist hero. They were heroes of their own story. I wanted HGS to have that same kind of camaraderie and love, and I was channeling a lot of my own close friendships when creating the High Guardian Spice Girls and their friend dynamics. Right, so Ray wanted to give off a vibe of camaraderie and love with these four characters, and I gotta say, he completely failed on that. The four girls, when they're socializing together, don't really seem like a close group of friends that watch each other's backs. They seem like a really shallow, stuck-up group of gossiping bitches at, like, a high school lunch table, you know? It might be because none of these characters have any actual personality to work off of with one another, but they don't seem to have any sense of bond at all. In fact, the only time where any of these characters do show any form of it is when the two leads are radiating lesbian tension. Look, I know there was a writing team, one of which was a f***ing nut job that says kill all men on Twitter, but Ray wrote and created the foundation of all of this. And I'm about to say something that's going to sound really mean and douchey, and I don't enjoy saying this at all, I really don't, but Ray Rodriguez is a fundamentally unskilled and untalented writer and artist. Every single aspect of this show's writing in terms of world building, personality, plot point, and more are all the most uninspired babble you could find. Every single piece of it. That's why this show looks like some basic bitch obscure kid show that would be on Cartoon Network. I really don't enjoy making fun of another person's artistic abilities because it's not like the sh** that I produce is some amazing groundbreaking work, you know? But I can, at the very least, I can say that what I have is a unique style, you know? Y you can't say that with this guy at all. The last question for Ray that I want to discuss is this. The interviewer asks, You're working on a few new projects, including one set in the DC Universe. Can you tell us anything about those? Ray responds, I am. I can't say too much yet, but I'm developing a brand new animated adult drama that I am very excited about. I've had the characters from that show in my head since I was in middle school, so it's a real dream come true to finally bring them to life. It's a show that's unlike anything I've seen in American animated TV before, so I am very stoked. Okay, so, once again, like I said regarding the first discussion topic, 
That's usually a red flag that the project in question is usually very dated or hollow in its creation. Like, I guarantee you, characters that you had back in your head, like when you were in middle school, I guarantee you that's not a good sign. That's a huge crimson red flag, I'm telling you right now. But yeah, he's looking into making a new animated adult drama. I've been speculating on what it is, but I think I found it out. You see, Ray Rodriguez has his own website. And on this website here, there's this one random tab called Reclaim Gloria, which is a fucking terrible name, by the way. Like, absolutely terrible. And I'm pretty sure this is what it is. Also, I just checked Ray Rodriguez's Twitter. Uh, as of the time of this recording, he's, like, drawing these characters from this project on his Twitter page. So that pretty much confirms that that's what he's working on. So, yeah, this is it. Okay, so uh, let me just give you my immediate first impressions here. Did Ray draw this sh himself? Because it looks like a DeviantArt level yaoi fan comic that would be sitting on a corner of Webtoon somewhere. A and this is gonna become an animated project, like seriously? Who is collaborating with this guy? Who is giving this dude money and animation studios to make these horrible projects? Like what the f Like look at this! This is going to be his next animated project. Now that I've brought this new project of his up, there's something really, really interesting that I want to point out. Like, on the real, if you're not actually paying full attention to this video, like, if you're playing Minecraft or something, and you're listening to what I'm talking about in the background, I would strongly suggest that you tab out of your game that you're playing, or whatever you're doing, and pay full attention to what I'm about to show you, okay? Because I, 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 <laughs> I really want to show you guys this. I'm super excited. Okay, so, this is the character design sheet that shows the main cast of Ray Rodriguez's new project, right? And, um, there's this one character here that looks awfully interesting. <laughs> Look at this character right here. He looks awfully familiar, doesn't he? Like, super duper familiar. Like, I swear, I've seen this guy before. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm sure this is just a total coincidence. I'm totally sure that it's just a coincidence. But this character right here looks an awful lot just like Professor Caraway. And as we all know, Professor Caraway is a self-insert of the creator of this show. And, uh, yeah, I, I, that's all I wanted to point out. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, show that to you guys. Okay, so one thing is for sure. If this Reclaim Gloria thing gets denounced and publicized, I'm going to watch it. And I'm going to pick it apart, just like I did with this terrible show. So, yeah, I hope you guys are excited for that. <laughs> Let's wrap this up in part six.